As Augusta's life unfolded in a complex web of family dynamics and political intrigue, she faced unrelenting challenges and controversy. After Queen Caroline's ailing health failed to mend the rift between Augusta's family and her husband, Frederick's sudden death left her in an overwhelming grief. Augusta's fortunes took a turn. She found herself in a position of power as the mother of King George III, but her desire for control and the unconventional choices, like selecting the quiet Princess Charlotte as a bride for her son, would lead to further turmoil and isolation. Augusta's story is one of enduring hardship, manipulation and a thirst for power that ultimately backfired, tarnishing her legacy in history. The ailing queen and Frederick's attempt at reconciliation. A few months following Augusta's tumultuous journey, her adversary, Queen Caroline, fell seriously ill. Shockingly, an old ulcer had caused a portion of the queen's intestine to protrude, posing a life-threatening condition. It was clear to everyone that Queen Caroline's time was limited, prompting even Augusta's wayward husband, Frederick, to mend fences with his mother. However, the response he received was chilling. Augusta's reputation plummets. Despite Queen Caroline's critical condition, both she and King George II remained resolute in their refusal to see their estranged son, even during the Queen's final moments. To further humiliate Augusta and Frederick, Queen Caroline, upon her eventual passing, explicitly prohibited Frederick from attending her funeral. Augusta's dreams of a charmed life after her marriage to Frederick were increasingly distant birth of an heir and the king's disregard. A few months after Queen Caroline's death, Augusta gave birth to a son who would later become King George III. However, her joy was marred by the premature birth which filled her with fear for her son's survival. Additionally, King George II remained resentful and paid little attention to Augusta's children despite her eventually having nine of them. It wasn't until her last pregnancy that Augusta captured the king's attention, Albert, for all the wrong reasons. Devastating news for Augusta. In 1751, while heavily pregnant, Augusta received devastating news. Her previously healthy husband, Frederick, had passed away suddenly at the age of 44, believed to have succumbed to a rapid pulmonary embolism. Augusta's reaction was anything but composed. Augusta's overwhelming grief. Upon learning of her husband's death, Augusta initially refused to accept the news. As the doctor described, she was brought reluctantly to the knowledge that Frederick was no more. This sudden realisation dashed any remaining hopes of becoming Queen of England after enduring a difficult arranged marriage. Her situation worsened as she suffered from severe insomnia, necessitating her servants to force her into a bed at an early hour. Protecting Frederick's secrets. Despite Frederick's mistreatment throughout their marriage, Augusta felt compelled to mourn his passing and safeguard his darkest secrets. Just two hours after his death, with only a couple of hours of fitful sleep, Augusta entered his room and burned any private, likely scandalous letters that she could find. It was more than Frederick deserved, but fate would not return the same kindness to Augusta. Augusta the Outsider Following Frederick's death, Augusta faced numerous challenges. No longer the Princess of Wales, but now a doja. She had to care for her eight children with the ninth, Caroline Matilda, on the way. Moreover, King George II's disdain for his late son was evident during Frederick's Spartan and undignified funeral. Fearing abandonment, Augusta took necessary steps. Shortly after Frederick's passing, Augusta received a standard letter of condolence from King George II. Her response was strategically crafted to beg for mercy, forgiveness and most importantly protection. This move demonstrated that Augusta was no longer naive and inexperienced, earning her the king's support. He appointed her as a regent to act in his absence until her son George, the heir apparent, became of age. But this would prove to be a double-edged sword. Augusta's ascendance to power. Freed from the constraints of her troublesome husband, Augusta found herself wielding immense influence at court for the very first time.
However, things began to unravel almost immediately. She became overly protective of her children, keeping them away from the public eye and maintaining a veil of secrecy around their education, sparking suspicion among the courtiers. A scandalous friendship. Shortly after becoming a widow, Augusta's close relationship with John Stuart, the Earl of Boot, raised eyebrows and fueled rumours of an affair. Augusta's attempts to downplay their connection by insisting that Boot was visiting her alone, not anyone else in the household, only intensified the scandal. But the truth behind their relationship was far from what people expected. The illusion of a relationship with Boot. Contrary to the rumours of a romantic relationship, it's improbable that Augusta and John Stuart, the Earl of Boot, were involved romantically. Instead, Boot played a pivotal role in tutoring the future King George III. The arrangement also allowed Augusta to keep her son isolated, effectively maintaining control over him. It marked a significant shift as Augusta, who had been Frederick's puppet for years, began craving power, leading to a growing obsession, exerting total control over George. As George came of age, Augusta's control over him became absolute. She made nearly every decision on his behalf, including his place of residence and notably his choice of spouse. Augusta and Butte dissuaded George when he fell in love with a court lady and opposed his grandfather's attempts to arrange a royal marriage. Instead, determined to steer him towards her chosen bride, but as the saying goes, the best laid plans. Accession to Power In 1760, Augusta's father-in-law, the king, passed away suddenly at the age of 77, making her son King George III. Augusta now held the title of mother to the King of England, which, while advantageous, meant that she had to find a suitable wife for her son without delay, and her choice was unconventional. Choosing a naive bride Augusta selected the 17-year-old Princess Charlotte of Mecklenburg-Strelitz as her new daughter-in-law. She took charge of drafting and accepting the marriage proposal, illustrating her level of involvement in George's affairs. The rationale behind choosing Charlotte was unsettling, since she hailed from a small German principality, much like Augusta herself. Everyone assumed Charlotte would be quiet and unassuming, unlikely to engage in political manoeuvring. However, Charlotte would prove to be far more resilient than anyone anticipated exerting influence over Charlotte. Augusta wasted no time asserting her dominance over Charlotte. Shortly after their marriage, King George instructed Charlotte not to meddle, a directive likely influenced by Augusta. Augusta employed other methods to keep Charlotte in her place. A nightmare for Queen Charlotte. Despite being Augusta's choice as a bride, Charlotte received no maternal guidance from the doja. Augusta kept Charlotte isolated from many members of the English court, citing propriety and etiquette. She was reportedly distressed by Charlotte's higher rank in her presence as Queen of England, and jealousy appeared to be a significant motivator behind Augusta's actions as she was not the reigning queen. Surveillance and Isolation Augusta maintained a network of informants in court, selecting attendants and ladies-in-waiting loyal to her. The individuals reported on Charlotte's every move to ensure Augusta's control over her daughter-in-law. If Charlotte attempted to establish her own allies, Augusta would reprimand her for showing favouritism. Augusta's meddling was relentless. Augusta's political influence continued to expand, and in 1762 she used her considerable power to install her favourite, the Earl of Bute, as the Prime Minister of England. However, this move backfired spectacularly. Public hostility The public's disdain for the Earl of Bute was already considerable, but Augusta's association with him amplified their anger. Butte was perceived as Augusta's puppet, leading to pamphlets and public outcry demanding the impeachment of the king's mother. Augusta's reputation took a severe hit and she was compelled to take drastic measures. The downfall of Augusta and Butte. The aftermath of this episode had lasting consequences for Augusta and Butte as they found themselves vilified in history. 
Butte faced intense public animosity, with one commentator noting that Butte was hated with a rage there have been a few examples in English history. The disaster prompted Butte to resign from the Prime Minister position within a year and Augusta retreated from open political involvements with her reputation in tatters. However, the greatest threat to her legacy was yet to emerge from within her own household. Join me in part three to delve into how Augusta's fraught relationships with her children led to discord and defiance, with some of her sons making independent marriage choices and her youngest daughter facing a tumultuous royal marriage. We will look into her involvement in concealing her son George III's mental health issues and how this further complicated matters, as well as how her legacy included enduring family struggles and a deteriorating royal lineage. <laughs>